Hey guys, Grinny here. I just recorded a really quick market update as we obviously are dumping over the weekend due to some uh, worldwide stuff happening in Iran and Israel, but also uh, we were quite overextended on the daily and the weekly time frame. So what I'd spoke about is just some meme coin positions that I'm looking to take, some old coin positions that I'm looking to take. And fear is opportunity, red is opportunity, guys. We don't top blast into our trades. We wait for price to come to us and I digest that in this live stream today and I give some levels that we're looking at for some potential longs as well and we obviously digest how uh, price action is going compared to previous cycles as well and we still very much have price and time on our side for a longer deeper cycle into 2025. Be sure to leave me any questions you have down below more than happy to help you out. Enjoy the live stream. All right, guys, we'll just do a quick market update. I'm uh, just setting up the recording now. Uh, so yeah, we're just looking at the markets at the moment because obviously we are dumping. Um, essentially, what I'm looking at at the moment is Israel have uh, fired on Iran. So that's obviously the reason for the dip. I uh, might need to get out of a few different uh, tabs a little bit here. But um, essentially what we're looking at is opportunity now. Like we have been moving up quite aggressively uh, for quite a while, right? Like if we do take a look, like this is total crypto market cap. So we've been moving up since, yeah, the last sort of two weeks has been straight up price action. We retested this, so we thought we could re like break out and set some new highs, set a new high high, but we are now heading back down. I get worried guys, if we probably break below the two trill mark, um, and this would be very same for Bitcoin and stuff like that as well. Um, I pretty much, that's, that's a key level for me, right? Because that's a double bottom there. This is obviously, uh, if we do break below and close below, okay, then often that is quite bearish because you're setting a new low. So for me, watching pullbacks, um, if you do look at the market across, as you can see, there's red across everything, old coins are getting hammered. So uh, meme coins likely getting hammered as well. And I did draw this this morning. So this is a, a little mini range that I'm watching on Bitcoin. Uh, obviously that's taking the highs from July this year where we kind of did fail to break above it and confirm a breakout. Ideally, you would have liked to see sort of movement like that. So you could definitely call that deviation above this top of the range. Uh, the bottom of the range, I've just used these previous lows like we were just talking about on total crypto market cap from earlier this month, uh, which also kind of aligns with some lows last, um, well, yeah, three months ago, four months ago as well in June, July. Um, so if we do look at that, that's kind of the, the low to the high range that I'm watching. And then the white line is just pretty much that bull flag that we've been in since February this year, guys. So um, this is a small range within a bigger bull flag. Uh, momentum still like <clears throat> stochastic momentum on the daily is overextended. So it's no surprise that we are also kind of maybe retracing a little bit at the moment. So I'll be watching this mid range here, 64K. Um, I do still have some limit orders set in the Greeny Lev Trades channel uh, that are all still valid guys um, because they're taken from the current high to uh, from this current low down here at 59K. Um, so for me, any anything down, down here is, is bullish uh, and I'm looking for longs um, as a few people have kind of alluded to. Um, I didn't want to short just mainly because I haven't been at the computer just full time yet. Hopefully uh, by next Friday, I'll be full time in Brizzy. Um, just got to set up the place and hopefully the internet and everything is all good. Uh, but yeah, we are starting to see shorts print, which is great based on fundamental news, obviously that I discussed before the, the strikes in Iran and then obviously... Yeah, we were overextended after a couple of weeks moving up. So if you have any questions, guys, please drop them in the chat or just unmute yourself. More than happy to chat as well. Good to see a few people in the group. Uh, we've got one ping. GMT Ward, thanks for, thanks for being here, mate. So um, yeah, if we look here, guys, I, I do have some limit orders set. I think there's one at, um, oh, I'll have to look at, hold on, I'll have to pull up my Bitcoin chart so i've got one set yeah 65 to 63k is also where i've got it i might add one at this midline here at 64.3 um i might yeah because the previous week here at 65.3 is what i was eyeing as as well but if we do look at daily momentum we do have room to the downside guys for quite a while and we're well below that 69k now so we very much could move to the downside let's look at the four hour Four hour also 60. Yeah, no, maybe I'll move my limit orders down lower. So I'll, um, I'll send some new pings through uh, soon um, on some levels that I'm looking at. But yeah, there's still room to the downside on both the daily and the hour, uh, four hourly. Let's look down at the hour. 
yeah, the hour has bottomed, so maybe we get a little relief bounce uh, in the short term. But yeah, still a lot of uh, heavier downward pressure from the higher time frames. Weekly, yeah, the weekly has room for 62K uh, before we move up. So yeah, no, looking at the <clears throat> the daily in the four hours, guys, it's likely that this, this could retrace a little bit further uh, in a few different ways. So for me, this is opportunity, guys. Like, like I said, I just posted that in, I think it was a general chat. Um, but essentially what you're looking at is um, the, let me see if I still have it open. No. Oh yeah, I do. <clears throat> so if we look here, um, this is what I've currently got open. Oh, you paused your preview to save on resources. Come on. Come on. Why are you not showing? There we go. All right. So um, halving to all-time highs. If we take a look at statistically what happens um, in the past, right? What you'll see is uh, I, I exclude the first one as um, it's an outlier, mainly because uh, Bitcoin wasn't a mature asset then. Cryptocurrency wasn't a mature asset then. Um this is way back in like 20, um, oh gosh, I'm going to flank on the number. It was 2011, 2012 or something like that. So like quite a long time ago. Um, so these these latest two cycles is what I kind of compare it to statistically speaking. Um, so if we do look at that, we still have room to consolidate and still be within the average of these days. So that's like, it's still another what, 30 days. So another month before we probably hit the average of the last two cycles, okay? Um, and then, so stay stay patient is pretty much what I'm saying. And and dips are opportunity, fear is opportunity. Like I've always said throughout this cycle, we've, we've still managed to print a lot of profits this year, um, even though we have been consolidating sideways since March, guys. Um, and a lot of the lucrative times were obviously pre-March, but then we've managed to really scale into a lot of successful trades, um, just waiting for price to come to us. And it's the same again, we wait for price to come to levels that we like. Um, I know Aussie and Sexy have been nailing a lot of those leverage trades as well. So yeah, keep an eye on this and do think about your meme coin positions and taking aggressive profits on those swing trades. Um, a lot of the the top memes that we have been, uh, that we swing traded from, uh, it would have been the start of October or September. So I'm talking with Giga, Mog, Pepe, okay, Ponky, Michi, like all of those top meme coins that we want to hold for at least three to six to 12 months. They are coming again down to good levels where you can get a nice risk to reward entry. So we'll look at those very shortly. But I just want to remind you guys, stay patient, okay? You're not going to make thousands of millions, millions of dollars overnight, okay? It's a process of compounding your profits over time, right? So right now, we are seeing that at least consolidation for me could last another month or two before I then would start to maybe be a little bit more worried because we are setting a longer um sort of consolidation period post halving, which would be in a an sort of an outlier, right, compared to previous cycles. But you do have to remember, like we spoke about earlier this year too, is we front run that cycle. So we set a new all time high before we obviously reached um the halving, which is crazy, right? So consolidation for longer now, post halving would kind of make sense in theory if it is to obviously align based on previous sort of um, structure of how long the bull market lasts. And the same one again, I don't know if it's on this one. No, I don't have it on. Oh no, over here, yeah. So this one over here, like post halving to peak, this like, look how many days we still have guys. We have like 200 and what's that? I can't do quick math, 325 days in theory to again, wait until the peak of this cycle could align with previous cycles. So, and even that outlier, like the first cycle we ever had was at 372 days. So this is why I stress being patient and waiting for price to come to you because we still have time to accumulate spot. This is probably one of the, the last sort of month or two that we have time to accumulate spot but get into some really good positions. And that's why I've been favoring more um, longs over shorts because you are fighting a macro bull trend right at the moment. And we're about to move up into price parabolic price action uh, in the coming sort of probably months in my opinion. Just depends on a few macro sort of things, right? Liquidity coming in, uh, cost of living. Ideally, you want that to come down. I know rates in Australia haven't come down yet. So hopefully we match the rest of the world, those sorts of things, because then that allows people to be a bit more risk on, right? And invest in cryptocurrency and invest in meme coins and those types of things as well. So yeah, I, I still remain patient here, guys. So um, don't freak out, okay? Uh, dips are opportunities at the moment. All right, uh, T-Board, I wonder how much the macro events like Iran explosions would impact the accuracy of TA. Well, in theory, yeah, like obviously they, they can be, if it's a full-blown black swan event, like I just think back to when uh, Bitcoin dumped all the way down to like 3K during... Um, 
COVID, right? Like that's that's where TA doesn't really come into it. But like I just showed before, um, I'll pull it back up. Like we were, we were, let me just make sure the Discord's got it. We were overextended, right? Um, and we had reached sort of the top of this little mini range that we've been in for quite a while. Uh, over here with this rejections previously here, we obviously, I would have loved to see us break out of this sort of bull flag that we're in. You've got momentum on the daily and on the four hours like we just looked at, still very much too probably pressure towards the downside or at least come back down, retest some shallow fibs and then look for a move up um, to maybe retest um, this high here and then ideally retest some of these highs that we set earlier this year. Because in theory, we have set higher highs, right? Like macro time frame. if we look at the weekly, we have set higher highs. So that's bullish, re, re, like that's a regain of bullish structure, right? So if I just zoom in a little bit, there we go. So you have set a higher high, right? We ideally will set a higher weekly low. So, I mean, this would be an absolute steal if you could come down here, retest that sort of mid 60 range. So that's about 64.25, 64.3 that would be a higher low. Anything where we start to close a weekly below 62, that's where I get really bearish, okay? So in theory, we could wick all the way down to the bottom here at about sort of 60K. As long as we don't close below that sort of 62.8, that's where I'd probably be like, okay, uh, this is still very much a bull market. So yeah, good question. Um, and yeah, like some fundamental news and that sort of thing definitely means that TA can't be used all the time. But this is what I'm looking at here, guys, is a shallow pullback. Ideally, we can catch this long. We have those limit orders set and then we take this move up over the coming months. So that's what I'm looking at. So I hope that makes sense. But yeah, let me know if you have any other questions, guys. Um, but if we do take a look at, um, because everyone loves their memes and I think a lot of people who have joined the group recently uh, obviously miss the opportunity to get into some of our good plays. So Giga and Mog and even Bitcoin, uh, like Harry Potter, Harry Potter and that sort of thing. So we'll have a look at those now um, because it's it, they're starting to come to good levels. And this is why, like, like sure, be, be like Murad if you got in super low and you... Um, and you're a believer and you want to hold those bags, that's fine. But we obviously are more on the trading side and a lot more people aren't in lower. So for me, guys, what I start to do is I trade and I do take profits. Like I did take profits, like I pinged you about a week or two ago on some of these moves up because at the end of the day, guys, like you want to walk away with profits this cycle and we want to rotate, okay? I speak from experience where the previous two cycles, I round tripped a lot of my gains, okay? So I don't want to be doing that and I don't want other people to make the same mistake. So that's why essentially I always say take some profits from a trade because you never know what's going to happen, right? So if we do look at something like this, I don't know why my lines are up here. But essentially, this is um, Harry Potter, Obama, Sonic, Inu, 10, whatever it is. Um, we're starting to look at a retest here. So this is a great... Oh, no, hold on. This looks wrong. Market cap is at 50, 74. My deck screen has been real bizarre lately. Um... Let me go to a different chart just to check. No, that's not what I want. Okay, hold on. Let's go to Pepe. My deck screen has been inaccurate with its uh, market cap readings. No, okay, so Pepe isn't. Okay, good. So this is what I mean. Like we traded this breakout here from uh, the start of September all the way up. Uh, I am still very much holding my bag of Pepe and Whiff and Mog and those sorts of things. But what you're starting to see is really good levels. And I spoke about this on a stream last weekend we're reaching good levels where you can start to DCA back into these bags. And a simple strategy, guys, draw the fib from the swing low to the swing high, or alternatively draw it from the absolute low to the absolute high and see whether that actually aligns with some positions that you would like to take. So if you zoom out a little bit further, um, on the newer tokens, this is what I like to do is all, all time lows to all time highs. Now, ideally you want to get as close to zero as possible on these higher time frames. Um, you can't. So if I just remove the swing. So as you can see here, guys, we are retesting the 0 0.5 of the whole macro range. So this, and we held this, right? We held this previously on Pepe multiple times. We respected this level. So this is what I meant. Like this is a great sort of entry right now. If you have missed something for Pepe and you want to hold it longer term. And again, if we come back down into this range, I think that's a great great accumulation area. And I'm sure other charts like WIF will likely be the same. <clears throat> so let's have a look at that. Come on, internet. I have to close a few more tabs. All right. If there's any questions though, guys, let me know. More than happy to chat and discuss as well. Um, all right, let me close a few things.
My apologies. All right, here we go. Okay. So see, um, there's a lot more strength in like whiff and stuff as well. And I drew this this morning actually, so we can start to consider really good risk to reward sort of swing trades on these positions as well. Um, I just want to make sure that we do see, like we saw before, momentum still to the downside on um, on Bitcoin. So I probably won't be looking to long these just yet, but that's why buying spot is a really good play as well. So again, WIF is hitting the 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 sort of range on its swing low to its swing high, guys. So that's what I mean. Like FIBs are a great way to trade, okay? And if we do zoom out and let's just apply the strategy to the whole chart, okay? So all-time highs to all-time lows. Let's see where it aligns. Uh, if we go down to zero, so it's 1 million. So yeah, like in theory, like we saw before, Pepe had already reached its 0.5. As you can see here, WIF is below its 0.5. So if we do come down here, reset um, potentially a lower low, or even if we retest the 618 in a wick, I would be probably buying that at 1.86, okay? Um, so it is opportunity right now in a lot of these trades. Let's look at MOG as well. And again, you got to remember, we were in these at 300 million, guys. And look at that. So MOG is currently retesting support. It has broken below. It could potentially go lower if obviously macro does go lower, but that's opportunity. And again, we you spend a lot of time in that, that golden pocket from the swing low to the swing high. So a lot of these charts are going to be quite um, similar, right, where you can start to get into some of these trades um, at really better risk to reward entries, right? You don't want to be buying up here when it's pumped after weeks and weeks of beautiful price action. You want to be getting in where there's a better risk risk to reward entry. So something like MOG right now is, is at a nice DCA, 650. Um, definitely, that's that's nearly a 2X back up to 1 billion in the future. So um, yeah, but if anybody have a question, someone unmuted? No, OG, no problem. Um, outside that guys, like I do wanna check the pump fund data because that's often a sign of potentially a local top as well. Um, so if I just load that up, as well. Um, where is it? I thought I saved it. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, so if we look here, total deployed, right? Look at the highs that we're hitting at the moment. And this is like when I start to see new all-time highs being created for pump fund data, it often is probably a little bit more of a bearish signal for me. Um, fees are at nearly all-time highs as well. Um, so it is always good to keep an eye on on these sorts of stats, fundamentally what's happening on chain, right? Because if a lot of people are starting to gamble and a lot of people are like, yeah, I can make a lot of money, particularly with this AI narrative where AI is creating a lot of tokens quite frequently, that's often a sign of, okay, maybe de-risk a lot from your positions and just wait for a good risk to reward setup. So we are hitting some crazy sort of numbers on pump.fun transactions and, and total deploys. Um, but again, guys, like I, I need to find that one that Adam made. Um, let me see, because his is excellent. It tells you the percentage. For some reason, I can't find it right now, but essentially... This is why stress pump fund trenches is so risky, right? Because at the end of the day, um, here it is. Um, at the end of the day, what we're looking for is solid probability that we're going to make money. The win rate right now is still 1.5%. This is crazy, right? Like look at these numbers. So in the past month, guys, so in September, it's at 1.3. Uh, in October, uh, what's it? Uh, August was 1.29. In July, 1.5. In June, 1.6. Uh, I believe this month is about 1.5. Um, he has posted a few times on his Twitter account. It's Adam uh, Tech as well. Follow him on Twitter. He's great, great follow. But yeah, we're seeing all-time highs for cumulative tokens. We're seeing all-time highs in revenue uh, being created as well. And again, the percentage is still low. So this is why I don't spend a lot of time in the trenches because I want to see this higher. If this can start moving up towards two to five percent, that's when you know, okay, you've got a better risk to reward at finding those potential plays in the trenches. I much would rather wait till it gets to graduation. We see it on on Dex Greener and at the liquidity pools live, and then that way you can actually find high volume tokens within that sort of one hundred to five hundred k market cap. That's ideal at the end of the day. Um, cool. Well, outside that, guys, um, there's not too much else I want to talk about. 
I just wanted to touch base and say that dips are opportunities. Um, and if we do take a look at a lot of our old coins too, um, where's Solana? We are starting to move down. Now, we obviously are in a long from Solana. I think it was like one, uh, one high 140s, I think we got in, maybe 150s, but uh, 150 flat might be where we are. But essentially what we're looking at is a really nice sort of, again, coming back down and retesting potentially a higher low. So. I was looking at this like this is what I mean. A lot of tokens did run up quite aggressively. Uh, support, 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 support over many days. And obviously we did break down. And what we're looking at right now is at least um, a little short-term bounce. But as we showed before, momentum still very much to the downside on Bitcoin. So I'd be keeping an eye on what happens on trades like this. But I know uh, Aussie had before that he's looking to long Solana way back down here at this 144. If we see it, that would be um, an amazing retest of this long-term accumulation uh, zone. Um, ideally we do, but I've, I think I've got some orders already set from about mid 150s to 151. Like this is what I mean. Like I'm happy to DCA at this levels on low leverage, okay? Because I know, and then have my stop loss all the way down here, because I know that this is likely an opportunity for what's about to come uh, towards the end of this year, right? And if we do take a look at some price predictions, guys, uh, just using Fibonacci, uh, 210 is a simple, and 270 remains my probably my my targets, right, from this breakout range. So if you take the high, okay, to the low of this range, uh, we can then set some extensions. And what we're looking at is the 1.618 at 270, right? Which is in theory, a new all time high for Solana. So once it does break, uh, let me put on the weekly so it's a bit nicer. But once we obviously break out of this range, guys, um, that we're in, the 270 is an obvious target for me for those leveraged trades but also uh, for spot, like probably not a bad idea to take some off the table. And I spoke about that in the portfolio management uh, conversation that we had a few days ago on Wednesday as well. And I did actually draw this, which is really interesting. Um, and 209 is again, another target that I would have for this swing trade out of this, this range. I did draw this too, because um, now we've had probably now three rejections along this potential thing. So uh, resistance level here. So in theory, that's probably now my bigger zone that we could maybe say is um, probably what Solana needs to try and break out of, okay? Um, so again, anything that comes back down here, retest this zone. If, like worst case scenario, if you get down to this 120 region, that that is a steal for Solana in my opinion because it still has strength, right? And if we do take a look, it's probably dipping today um, against BTC, but it was looking very strong for a breakout. Yeah, so we're still in this consolidation period, guys. So for me, like it still remains probably the best pick out of all the old coins and all the coins this cycle is still Solana at this moment of time. And if we do look at Ethereum versus Solana, like this is a no brainer, like this just reached all time highs guys as well. So for me, likely this probably breaks higher. Maybe we do get a retest and then continues higher. So um, the other chart, which we haven't looked at for a while is actually BTC versus ETH. And now this just looks horrible, right? And I mean, if it doesn't bounce here, guys, goodness gracious, I don't even know where to target. Yeah, maybe maybe down here at like, yeah, 0 0.3034 0 percentage, 0 0.26. That's probably where I target, guys, if, if ETH doesn't bounce here against BTC. Like, again, it's just struggling to find its market share. Like, what what is the Ethereum? Is it... Is it trying to be a store of value like Bitcoin, that sort of side of things? Is it trying to be decentralized or is it actually more like a dev side? So is it more like Solana and AVAX where people want to use it to build, right? And you still got a lot of DeFi on Ethereum and it's L2s and that sort of thing. But people started to realize that Solana probably is a better L1 in comparison to Ethereum this cycle for at least trading and for DeFi and for staking and for building as well, those sorts of things. So yeah, really interesting. Um, but outside that, yeah, spot, spot packs get bigger every day, Ozzy says in the chat. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much what I'm looking at. I'm seeing that there's opportunity now. Um, so don't be afraid of red. Red is opportunity in crypto, guys. And this is Pepe, for example. Like you don't want to be buying when you've just seen massive weekly candles like this. You want to be buying at opportunities of higher lows, ideally, to be getting into some of these trades. Um, if we do take a look, a lot of our old coins are bleeding down 10%, but again, they're down 10% and we're still up very much from our buys in September. So just something to be aware of. Uh, and like I said before, guys, um, with the halving to all-time highs and halving to peak, we still have time on our sides. I'm, I'm not worried about that until maybe 
like if we don't start making new highs by probably January, okay, maybe I do start to de-risk and maybe think about what is, else is happening worldwide um, because that might be potentially something that's happening with the cycle. So I hope that just gives you a bit of insight, a bit of clarity, guys, but I am looking for long opportunities on a lot of different main coins and altcoins very soon. And this is why it pays not to trade, over trade. So many people over trade in this market, guys, um, particularly the main coin side because it gets addictive. It gets quite um, like you get stuck in that mindset. Oh, if I just catch that next that next meme coin, it could be the next 100x or the next 1000x, right? So for me, it pays to spend a lot of time not over trading and just wait for good to risk risk to reward opportunities. There's enough opportunities every single day in cryptocurrency, whether it's our future trades, whether it's meme coins, Nadia just caught an insane NFT that just did a 20X overnight. So there's enough opportunities, guys, that you don't need to do a lot of quantity trades. You can spend more time on the quality side. So I hope that makes a lot of sense. But yeah, happy to answer any questions. If anyone has any, feel free to unmute or uh, let me know in the chat. I'll uh, obviously... Um, put this uh, recording up on YouTube so you can watch it back if you would like to uh, and see some of the levels that we're looking at for some of the other trades. So thanks for tuning in, everyone.